So, you want to decorate your home for Halloween, and you figured some corpses might do the trick. However, the local cemetery is really far away, and you're not really much for digging. Well, fear not. I'm going to teach you guys how to make your very own life-size-ish corpses right here at home. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Hydra Collectibles where we let our geek flag fly. My name's Luke and I'm your host and this is Corpse Building 101. Before we get started, I'd like to encourage you to hit that subscribe button. We put out geeky content every week and if you'd like to be ahead of the curve, you can also hit the bell icon. So in order to get started, first of all you're going to need a base. Something to work and build upon. For this, I would recommend one of those life-size-ish skeletons. They tend to be around five foot tall, normally made of plastic or rubber. Um, you can find these in your local Walmart or Costco. Uh, over here in the UK, we'll find them in Wilco's or Asda or even Argos. They're quite plentiful around this time of year. Once you've got these, the first thing that you need to do is get your other supplies. This would include things such as liquid latex, some form of packaging or um, anything that you can use to bulk out certain parts of the body. Um, cotton wool, tissue paper, the thinner the better. With this tissue paper, even if you get the typical strands, like the extra padded, just tear them apart, make them as thin as you can, take layer upon layer, because that's what we're going to use to build the layers up upon our corpse. So, once you and your friend have got your skeletons safely back home and received a lot of weird looks as you drive past in the car, you can begin to set up your workspace. Now, what I like to do is get a nice big bowl and pour my liquid latex into that bowl and use a brush or a stipple sponge to basically coat the skeleton in a layer of latex. Over the course of this time, we're gonna use multiple layers of latex, but this first layer is what everything else will grip to. So, once you've done that and allowed it to dry, you can begin adding not only the second layer, but also some additional pieces. Now, it's worth noting that you're going to need to think very heavily about how you want this final piece to look. If there are certain things that you want to still look like bone, then you won't want to cover those pieces in the latex or any of the other products. You also want to consider the clothing that this thing is going to wear, because if a lot of it is covered up, then don't waste the materials. You know, just work with what you need. If you only need to do the head, the neck and the hands, then by all means just do that. The sizing that I find works best for these five foot skeletons is actually children's size, aged nine to 10. Now this might vary depending on the state or the country in which you live. But over here in the UK, that seems to be fitting enough for what we need. So, once you've established whereabouts you need to apply the additional materials, you can begin. I would first begin by painting a second layer of latex and then beginning to lay various strands or strips of cotton wool onto those areas. You'll find that it sticks almost immediately. You can then re-go over with your brush or stipple sponge to really you know, hammer that down and really severely coat that in latex. The idea is, is that you're not only forming this physical anatomy underneath, but also you know, turning the skeleton into a rubbery texture. Now, obviously, it's Halloween. This isn't a movie set. People aren't gonna be too focused on if things are anatomically correct. However, being a bit of a stickler for that myself, I would choose to have certain things in place wherever I can. Obviously, this doesn't always work out. These skeletons themselves aren't always too precise. Um, but you know, you, you work with what you've got. So what I like to do for some of these is actually lay some additional groundwork. I like to get some like clean film or plastic bags, and I like to tape them in place to give me more of a stomach to my, to my skeleton, to the corpse. Then I can also re-stipple that with latex, add in the additional cotton wool and everything. What I like to do is make the cotton wool into the shape that I believe the muscles and tendons should be. Paint over it with the latex, multiple layers. You want like at least four to five, sometimes maybe 10 layers of latex on these things in order to give it that sturdy feel. Um, but once that is done, then I go in with the layering of tissue paper because this layering of tissue paper over the top creates a form of skin that goes along with your uh, with your disgusting corpse look. And again, like with before, if you want to have certain bits on show, you want to paint them a different colour, you want it to look like the raw muscle underneath, then just don't go over those pieces with these materials. So, while you're waiting for your skeletal corpse to dry, 
you can then focus on the clothing. Now, this is extremely simple in my eyes. What you want to do is get yourself a massive container, as big as the items of clothes can fit into, and basically make yourself a very large cup of tea. I find buying an entire box of tea bags, tipping them in and applying hot water, creates the perfect recipe in order to dip and soak your clothes into. I tend to leave these in for a good 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer, really get it all soaked in. Then I lift them back out and begin to apply additional things, whether that be coffee granules or whether that be real life dirt from outside or just paint. You know, you can, you can make it work with whatever you have. But the idea is, is that you want these to look old and tattered. Now, old and tattered, that is a key element here. Don't just shred the clothing. We don't want all those spiky edges going along the bottom of the shirt. It's very cartoony, it's not realistic. What I would recommend is when your skeleton is complete and everything is painted and done with the skeleton, I would recommend putting the clothing on said skeleton and literally having a tussle with it. Rip the pockets, rip the sleeves. You wanna rip areas where seams are, something that is real and genuine of if this thing was to lunge at you and you had to fight it off, they're the areas that you would have grabbed, they're the bits that would have been forced and ripped. And that's gonna give you a much more realistic look. So yeah, don't do the classic shredded, like Scooby-Doo style clothing. Like that's not gonna cut it, that's not gonna work. Sometimes it can. If you're doing something a little bit more lighthearted for like young kids or something like that, or if you just like that, um, that retro feel, it can work really well. So I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying that for me personally, it makes more sense to do it a certain way. So let's talk about painting your corpse. You can use any type of paint for this really. Um, even if you were gonna use your typical water-based snazaroo or cream-based paints, the best thing that I could recommend that you do after you finish painting is re-go over with a few layers of latex just to seal that in. Uh, obviously you can use real life sealers, etc. but over time you might find that that paint does come off if you don't put that extra layer of latex over the top. Once the corpse is fully painted and complete, you can apply your clothing. And then that is the great time, as I mentioned before, to rip the clothes, to add additional paintwork, maybe throw some blood on it if you're going to imagine that that zombie is just fed and eaten. What I wouldn't do is I wouldn't make the zombie too fresh. You know, this is a dried out husk. This is more skeletal than flesh. So any additional blood that you put on the zombie should be spatter from someone else. Like if the zombie has just fed on someone and that blood has spattered and poured over the zombie, if you want to put it on the mouth, that's where you want to add those those bright colors. Other than that, everything else should be a very dark tone. We should be using like dark browns, yellows, um, weird off creamy colors, um, anything that just gives that illusion of the dried out husk. So going back to the whole less is more thing, don't work unless you have to, or unless you want to. Making these corpses can be a lot of fun and it is highly addictive once you get the ball rolling. That being said, if you want to create yourself an entire zombie plot and you don't have time to make so many corpses make yourself two maybe three of them to this standard and then cheat your way through the rest how are you going to do that i'll tell you get yourself a load of recyclables get yourself empty milk bottles boxes anything that you have that you can store in a in a safe dry place um, and you can just piece it together to create a corpse like shape we can then wrap that up in a bin bag and tape and it very much looks like a body bag has been thrown out onto the floor. Another thing that you can do is get yourself some mannequins, drape some old bed sheets over them, apply a little bit of blood to look like someone has killed them with a headshot and lay them out on the ground as well. And if you have enough, this can look extremely impressive. You know, this can look like a dumping ground for the undead, you know, all the ones that have been dealt with. Um, one thing that I would recommend is get one of these body bags that you've created, open it up, and remove whatever piece of trash or rubbish that you have as the head and discard that and put one of these skeletal heads inside. Because what that does is visually, as people are creeping through to get to the door, they see that head sticking out of a body bag and they automatically assume that all the other body bags and all the other sheets must be the same containing these corpses. And that really adds to the fear, it builds up the suspense. And then as they get to the door, you can have someone leaping out in full zombie makeup, scaring the pants out of them. It goes a long way, you know, they building up the suspense as they reach the property with these additional props and pieces, 
goes a really long way and can be a lot of fun. So, there you have it. That was Corpse Building 101. Maybe one day we'll do a 102. If you're going to try out this project and you get a little bit stuck, please, please, please do not hesitate to get in touch. I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have. You can contact me right here on this video in the comment section below, or you can hit me up on Instagram. I'll put the link in the bio. Also, if you are successful in this creation, head over to my Instagram and tag me in those pictures. I would love to see what you guys create. With all that in mind, that's it for today. Please let me know in that comment section below what your favourite horror slash Halloween creature might be. I personally have always loved zombies, but I do feel that they've become very oversaturated in the market recently. But who knows, maybe it will quieten down and maybe they can settle back in with their time to shine later down the road. If you like this video, why not hit that like button, poke it straight in its zombie eye. And why not check out this video up here? Or this one down here and if you haven't already subscribed hit this button right around here it really goes a long way to helping the channel grow and until next time i'll see you in the afterlife take care